Good evening, I'm Haley Wilgus. Scott Dennis has the evening off. Thank you for joining us. Our top story tonight, the second night of the GOP convention. Republicans are trying to get back on message after taking heat that Melania Trump's strong speech last night was plagiarized. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is live tonight in Cleveland with the latest on that. We head out to Marcy now. Hi there. Things are getting off to a slightly later start for day two. And with more members of the Trump family scheduled to speak tonight, we're told the GOP is now reviewing their speeches, trying to avoid a repeat of last night. Melania Trump's keynote speech on opening night of the Republican National Convention quickly going from celebrated to controversial, with two parts of the speech sounding nearly identical to First Lady Michelle Obama's words at the 2008 convention. You work hard for what you want in life. That you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. That your word is your bond and you do what you say and keep your promise. Trump's campaign manager denying accusations of plagiarism, saying those are just small parts of much longer speeches. To say that she lifted any words from anybody is, is absurd. But Trump's former campaign manager hinting that a speechwriter could be to blame. I think if there was a mistake, it was at the staff level and staff should be held accountable. Trump tweeting support for his wife, but making no comment on the controversy as delegates vote today to officially nominate him as the Republican presidential nominee. With more possible backlash on the convention floor from delegates with the failed Never Trump movement, House Speaker Paul Ryan is among the speakers tonight, focusing on trying to unify the party behind Donald Trump. And he lost control on the floor and with the messaging, with the accusations of plagiarism in his wife's main speech, he needs to get control and fast. Otherwise, this week is going to quickly spiral away from him. And other speakers planned for tonight include two of Trump's children and two former rivals, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Dr. Ben Carson. Live in Cleveland, Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News. Now back to you. Thank you, Marcy. Some of the other big names expected to take the stage tonight. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. ABC 7's Alan Cohn continues our team coverage of the RNC tonight with more on why some top Florida politicians are not attending this convention. We thought you might like to see our workspace here in Cleveland. We are with the folks from ABC News, and these are ABC affiliates from around the country, actually around the world. It actually seems there are more media, more reporters than there are elected politicians. Think about it for a moment. Our U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, he's not here. Our congressman from the Sun Coast, Fern Buchanan, not here. One Florida congressman who is is Ted Yoho from Gainesville. Finally, what do you think people at home should make of, you know, our Senator Marco Rubio is not here, we're from the Sun Coast, Fern Buchanan is not here, mm -hmm. a number of other members of Congress aren't here. Does that matter? What should people make of it? No, I don't think that matters. I, I, you know, people have busy schedules. Um, I know Marco's got a busy schedule. You'd have to talk to him as for why he didn't show up. But I know a lot of congressmen didn't come. And it wasn't because they were shunning this or to send out a message. They just had other schedules to do. House Speaker Paul Ryan, who is the chair of this convention, he has stayed away too until tonight where he will speak to delegates. Of course, we'll have more coming up at 6 and on ABC 7 at 7. I'm Alan Cohen in Cleveland at the Republican National Convention. Back to you. Thank you, Alan, and we will continue to bring you live updates from the RNC tonight and all week long. ABC 7's Ray Collins and Alan Cohn will be there through Thursday. Of course, you just saw Alan's report. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC 7 for the latest, as well as our website, mysuncoast.com, and our social media pages. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton will make several stops here in Florida before heading to Philadelphia for the Democratic National Convention. Clinton will visit both Orlando and Tampa this Friday. In Tampa, she plans to hold a rally at the Florida State Fairgrounds, where she is expected to announce her pick for vice president. Then on Saturday, Clinton will travel to South Florida for another rally. Her campaign office has not released many details about these events. And now we're going to head over to Bob. We had quite the stormy afternoon and a lot of rain in our area. Yeah, in our area is correct uh, too. I'll, I'll tell you what, Haley, most of that activity now offshore, there's still some light rain lingering. There were some severe uh, weather warnings for Highlands County. 
uh, just around uh, 2 30 this afternoon with some big cells blowing up there and that quickly has moved uh, north and west and for the most part light to moderate rainfall occurring right now across most of Manatee County with the heavier cells by far offshore. You can see some of that light rain extending all the way down to places near Venice and Englewood but uh, by far some showers moderate to heavier into East Manatee County right now. So we'll keep a chance for showers over the next couple of hours and it should be a pleasant evening as we start to see that easterly wind flow move on in. A rainfall totals are pretty impressive right there by Lakewood Ranch up to an inch and a half to two inches in just a short period of time. More in our weather forecast in just a few. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. Now to a developing story in Manatee County where the sheriff's office is investigating a homicide. Deputies say a man's body was found on Old Tampa Road in Parrish. Deputies say it appears the body was dumped on the side of the road. The victim's name has not been released and the sheriff's office has not said how he may have died. Anyone with information is asked to call the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. A homeless man now faces life in prison for killing his landlord 13 years ago. Today, John Melquist was convicted of second-degree murder during his seven-day jury trial in Sarasota County. Melquist represented himself. He claimed he was innocent, saying he last saw the victim, Annalise Schweikert, when he took her to the airport. However, prosecutors successfully proved that Melquist killed her on April 9, 2003. Investigators say they found the victim's blood throughout her house and someone had cleaned it up. They also say Melquist's fingerprints were on a mop. Schweikert's body was never found during the investigation. Melquist faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. He is scheduled to be sentenced on August 29th. Manatee County will soon start accepting proposals to convert its old six-story jail building into workforce housing. The jail has been vacant for 10 years. The county recently put out an invitation to negotiate with anyone interested in leasing the property for commercial use. The building and its utilities are connected to the new judicial center. If it were to be converted into housing, a separate entrance would have to be built. The county is asking that 25% of the proposed living spaces be marketable to millennials. That was one of the uses they thought would be beneficial to revitalize the downtown area. One of those key factors has been housing, and that's, a, that's something that we uh, have been working on over the last two years, tried, starting to talk about um, thinking outside the box. The old jail is next to Bradenton's public transit hub and within three miles of the county's nine largest employers. 26, that's how many crashes the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office says happened on Bee Ridge Road just in June alone. Those accidents happened on the Bee Ridge Corridor stretch from I-75 to Beneva Road. Construction cones are up all along the roadway for a project that includes significant drainage improvements, resurfacing the roadway and reconstructing sidewalks. The project is not expected to be finished until next summer, so the Sheriff's Office is asking drivers to slow down and be patient. Next week, FDOT will hold a public hearing about the proposed changes for I-75 from south of Bee Ridge Road to south of Fruitville Road. That meeting will be on Tuesday, July 26th at the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manatee. The city of Venice evacuated the South Jetty area for three hours today because of a propane gas leak. A 120 gallon propane tank at Anita Sandcastle snack bar had a small vapor leak around 10 this morning. Around 50 people were evacuated from Anita's and Humphreys Park at the South Jetty. Firefighters were able to contain this leak by around 1 o'clock this afternoon and the area was reopened to the public. This tank will need to be replaced. ABC 7 business commentator Richard Stern is joining us now and Richard, one third of the beat goes on. Haley, you've got it exactly right. We've been setting records every single day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P have been up for seven consecutive days. Five straight record closes and today things slowed down a little bit. Volume was very, very light by current standards and the top to bottom range was only 37 points. We haven't seen that little swing intraday in quite some time. But the Dow Jones Industrial Average did finish with a gain, eight consecutive closes with gains, and that has not happened in more than three years. So let's take a look at the numbers, and they still don't look too bad. There you see the Dow up 26 points, 14 one hundredths. Remember that number, 14 one hundredths of 1 percent, closing at 18,559.01 on volume of 676 million shares. The Nasdaq was the biggest loser of the day and frankly didn't lose very much, less than four-tenths of 1 percent, down 19.41, closing at 5,036.37 
that on volume of 1,502 million shares. And the S&P, remember I said decimal 1.4? Well, there it is again. It was down by exactly the same amount that the Dow was up, down just over three points, closing at 2,000. 163.78. Well, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go has just taken over the world, it seems. And oh, by the way, its stock hasn't done too badly either. The company's name is Nintendo. You probably that, remember that from years past. Well, shares of Nintendo jumped 14% today. I said today. And they have more than doubled since the 6th of July, 13 days ago. Think about that. Pokemon Go is a smartphone app that uses Google Maps to overlay reality with Pokemon characters. Need I say there's been just tremendous coverage of it. Lots of people having accidents, actually. I don't mean automobile accidents, walking into people, things like that, because apparently this app is just something that people just can't stop looking at. Haley, I personally have not done it. I don't know about you. I have not either, but I don't usually get addicted to those things, but I don't even want to take the chance. There you go. But I know others are. And we talked about this earlier, Richard, a very tough day for Netflix. Yes. Yesterday we talked about the fact that after the market closed, they came out and said that their new subscriber base was quite a bit smaller than people had been expecting. And speaking of smaller, the value of the stock is down by 13% just today. So it shows you what happens when public companies come out with disappointing news. Most definitely. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Still to come on your Suncoast News, an event Selby Gardens has been waiting for for two years when the rare, smelly corpse plants are expected to be in full bloom. And ABC7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your full weather forecast. And later in Health Smart, one thing that you can take that's been clinically shown to shorten how long you have a cold. Local coverage of the Republican National Convention on ABC 7 News is brought to you by Stolarski Orthopedic and Age Vital Compounding Pharmacy. Need new windows? Buy direct from the factory. New South Window is having a sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Buy four windows, save 25%. Buy six windows, save 30%. Buy eight or more windows and save 35%. How? Because New South owns the factory and you cut out the middleman. Award-winning, energy-efficient windows and doors installed with a lifetime warranty. New South Windows are made in Florida for Florida homes by Florida workers. Visit NewSouthWindow.com or call now. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Looks like we're getting another new neighbor. Now you could be the millionaire next door. Play Monopoly Florida Edition scratch-off games with a top prize of $5 million. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today.
Dog days of summer got you down? Beat the heat with huge summer savings during the summer clearance event going on now at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. You'll be the coolest family on the block in your all-new Chrysler Pacifica for just $27,999. Or get the lowest price ever on a new Dodge Journey, just $15,999. And right now, get up to $10,000 off a new Ram Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Selby Gardens in Sarasota is about to get quite stinky. The garden's two corpse plants, Audrey and Seymour, they're named. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they're just a couple days away from blooming. The same two plants bloomed two years ago. They're now synchronized and will bloom again. Seymour next week and Audrey the following week. The corpse plant got its name because of the strong odor it releases when it blooms, which smells like rotting flesh. Mm -hmm. And it attracts an unusual group of pollinators, beetles and flies. So what it does is it mimics the scent and even the look of carrion, of dead animals in the forest. The public is invited to come out to the gardens and see the corpse plants as they bloom over the next couple of weeks. Just hold your nose, I guess. Or you something. Have, yeah. I guess that's the whole point of it. Yeah, everyone says it really smells yeah. very bad, so you have to be like in for that when you go. It's wild if you think about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hold your nose. Yeah. Seymour. I think that came Seymour. from a movie or something. Ma like yeah. There's a plant yeah. named Seymour. But uh, we have uh, some rain for the plants around town mm -hmm. today. In some areas, a little bit more than others. Uh, uh, most of the rain, the heavy rain is over. Get a look at the Van Wazel webcam looking out over Sarasota Bay this afternoon. Uh, right around 3 o'clock, uh, the showers came down heavy, lightning and windy conditions, and then things kind of moved on through pretty quickly with the heaviest rain offshore now. Uh, as I mentioned, still some light rain lingering, and a photo sent in by our own Richard Stern looking out over the bay right there. There's a little window of opportunity. As he said today, a window of opportunity was Nintendo. In this case, he got a nice shot right there and send it on in uh, to my email address. Appreciate that, Mr. Stern. And uh, you can get a look at the heavy rain that was around now off into the Gulf of Mexico with uh, some light rain still lingering, moderate uh, there in central Manatee County, just to the east of uh, Parish. Uh, reports of some strong winds there with a storm report uh, just off of Pinellas County earlier. And uh, not much else out there, although this is a pretty hefty line right here. It's going to have a hard time. I'm making it all the way over to the coast here. So we'll keep a slight chance for a few showers in. Uh, in fact, the rain will continue here for the next couple of hours. And then it should be a pretty nice evening. Like we saw last night with lower dew points and lower humidity around, it'll make it feel that much more comfortable. Now, as far as the rainfall totals go, we had some impressive amounts in your I-75 right there just south of Lakewood Ranch, nearly two inches near Fruitville and I-75 uh, stretching down toward Bee Ridge. And then out on the uh, north end of CST Key, nearly an inch of rain. And in Palmer Ranch, uh, just over a half inch of rain near the airport, a tenth of an inch. But look at this, uh, well east near Sebring where there were some uh, severe weather reports at times, uh, over three inches in just a short period of time there. Uh, causing some localized flooding problems. Still some light rain, 81 degrees. The dew point is at 73. We have an east wind at 9 now, and the pressure 3013, fairly high, and it's uh, holding steady for the most part. 92 in Jacksonville, it's 97 in Tallahassee, 90 now in Miami, and 88 degrees in Key West. And temperatures around the area have cooled significantly into the upper 70s to low 80s where it's rained. Uh, still, uh, Sebring has bounced back up to 87 degrees now. Same in Bradenton, 82 in Cortez, and 81 degrees in Braden Beach. Well, with this easterly wind uh, staying fairly strong, the sea breeze will not have much of a chance tomorrow to penetrate too far inland. So showers will pop up right near the coast, and there'll be some inland activity as well with the east coast breeze moving in, but generally right near the coast, and then those will drop off to the west. Now, this is at 5 p.m. You'll notice uh, the wind trying to get more on a westerly course there in Venice. As far as the overall moisture content goes, there'll be plenty of moisture in. And look at this large area of uh, moderate to moisture moving into parts of the Bahamas. It's kind of moving off to the west-northwest, so that will be in place too, especially throughout the afternoon and evening. So some of the storms developing tomorrow uh, will be some heavy rainmakers like we saw near Sebring, nearly three and a half inches of rainfall there. Well, as we play out the forecast model tonight, evening showers continuing up until about 9, then skies uh, becoming fair after midnight. Showers developing again in the afternoon and evening, and some of those could be some heavy rainmakers as